Dr. Ting, in a previous interview, you said that in most cases, it's not necessary to do any type of surgical expansion of the lower jaw to widen it in order to not have the maxilla be too wide for the mandible after an MSE expansion. Because you basically said in most patients, the upper is underdeveloped as compared to the lower. And so the MSE can achieve easily four to six, maybe even eight millimeters, just to the point where the upper is even or a little bit wider than the lower. I have a lot of people ask me, however, you know, I really think my upper and my lower are even already to start, but I do want to do some expansion. So I'm thinking I need some sort of mandibular surgery to match the lower with the upper. Have you guys ever worked together on a patient or would you work together on a patient who wanted to uh, do a, a lower jaw surgery to kind of complement the maxillary expansion of the MSE appliance? Okay, this is my opinion. Um, I think what you talk about is partially correct. I think there's might be a little mis misunderstanding. Now, <clears throat> I don't think the width of the mandible is ever a problem. I think the problem of people think they have width or mandible problems. Actually, the anterior posterior positioning of mandible. If patient have more receded jaw, so the smaller part of the lower jaw is facing the upper part, wider part of the upper jaw. So you will assume that, you know, my lower jaw needs to expand it. But it's actually not the lower jaw needs to expand it sideways. It's actually how far forward the mandibular can grow, okay? You want to, I mean, mandible to come forward more, either by surgery, or if it's a young kid, by growth, or if it's a patient with excessive facial height, by intruding the upper when we position out of, um, to rotate the lower jaw forward to increase, to increase the appearance of the lower jaw coming more forward. That's the main issue that we have encountered. So yes, they are underdeveloped the lower jaw, but it's not on the width, it's on the length. With the lower jaw. Now, width usually is not a problem unless you have some syndrome kids that naturally have a un completely underdeveloped the lower jaw. The women have an issue. <clears throat> I don't recall we have any patient with Dr. Vong um, on the width of the to, to correct the width of mandible um, um, patient. So, I want so it's good for Dr. Vong to put an opinion since we, this is an uncharted area between me and Dr. Vong that we never have a patient. Uh, together that correcting the width of problem. So Dr. Vaughn, what do you think what I say or what's your opinion? Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Tang and Ronald, it's, uh, it's what we were talking about with the cheekbones. Is it back to front or is it side to side? Um, with the mandible, in my experience, it's rarely side to side. It's more back to front. You, it, it's a recessed mandible that um, just has what we call anterior posterior deficiency or retronathic. And basically the, um, the wider portion of the jaw is pushed backwards where it's less noticeable. Whereas you can have, a, and there's a surgery for that. <laughs> the, you know, we call it a bilateral sagittal split osteotomy where we can then bring it forward. Uh, I, just to piggyback on what Dr. Ting said, it's a, in my experience, it's a rare thing um, that the mandible needs to be widened. Um, there are some extreme cases uh, where the maxilla and mandible are, are very narrow or in what we call syndromic cases where they have um, some chromosomal abnormality or some other uh, intrauterine kind of uh, constrictions. But um, for the most part, that's not something that people need um, it, it, from my experience. 